Hello everyone, welcome back to the S Pen Tech channel. So far in our all of the videos, we have discussed about S Pen and its use on various equipments like pump, compressor, turbine, valves, reaction engineering, separation processes, etc. But now I am making a shift towards the theoretical aspects. And for this, first of all, we will study the chemical reaction engineering and it will comprise of 30 to 32 lectures which I will present to my valuable viewers of Aspen Tech and hopefully these lectures will be covered within next few weeks as well. So in a lecture series, we are presenting the lecture number one. I am Dr. Mohammad Hari Sumayu, as you know and I'm working as assistant professor of chemical engineering. So in today's course coverage, we will first discuss what is chemical reaction engineering what are the pillars of chemical wow. reaction engineering, importance of reaction engineering in industry, how the chemical engineer is different from other engineers and applications of CRE. And then we will follow the book of H. Scott Fogler, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering, 5th edition. And we will move to the chapter number one, which is of mole balance. And today we will cover these two parts, that is the chemical species and chemical identity, first part, and then rate of reaction. Talking about the introduction to chemical reaction engineering, it is one of the two courses which makes us unique to other engineers. That is unique to chemical engineering and that separates the chemical engineer from other engineers. Or in other words, we can say that CRE, the chemical reaction engineering, is heart of chemical engineering. The other engineers don't study about the reaction mechanisms, the reaction engineering, the reaction kinetics, the reactor design. But we are the engineers that study these and this is one of those subjects, obviously one of the two subjects which differentiates us from the other engineers. Now once we talk about the chemical kinetics, it is the study of chemical reaction rate and reaction mechanism. The study of CRE, the chemical reaction engineering that combines the chemical kinetics with the reactors, with the equipments in which reaction is going to take place and chemical kinetics and reactor design are at the heart of producing almost all industrial chemicals. Any industry, processing industry, chemical industry is incomplete without the reaction system. Or we can say that in a chemical process, the reaction engineering, the reactor is the core of that plant or heart of that plant. Without the heart, you cannot operate. Primarily knowledge of chemical kinetics and reactor design distinguish the chemical engineers from other engineers. And last point is very important point that we have to select being the chemical engineers, being the process engineers, being the design engineers as such a system that operates in the safest and most efficient manner which can lead to the economic success. Or if that is not happened, then it can lead to the failure of a chemical plant. So economics, but before that safety, these are the crucial factors and obviously our aim after studying this course is to design such a reactor that is capable of producing efficiently but safely a profitable design. Now talking about applications of CRE, the chemical reaction engineering, it has applications in industrial processes manufacturing like manufacturing of various chemicals, pharmaceuticals and in R&D as well like waste treatment, microelectronics, nanoparticles and many more and obviously you are studying the course in both undergraduate and graduate programs as well. Now let's have a look at the CRE in industry. Now you can see the fresh B and fresh A2 feeds with mole fraction XA and XB are fed to this reactor. And the reaction could be batch or could be a flow system among which CSTR, PFR and PBR. Like the flow rate could be could follow the batch pattern and we have known batch means that you have fed it once then close the system and then operate it and continuous means continuous feed intake and continuous product outlet. The reaction conditions could be isothermal, adiabatic, catalytic, single phase or multiple phases. After this reaction is proceeded the products are formed like you can see that because of the reaction of A and B, C and D are produced. So you can see the unreacted A, the unreacted B, the produced, the formed C and produced 
B as product, which are then sent to the distillation or separation scheme. Usually the distillations are used over there to separate out. Like you can see that product C is obtained from the top of this column, while product D is obtained from the bottom of this column, while the unreacted A and B are recycled in the process. Again, recycling has its own unique characteristic that increases the efficiency of the process. But now if you look here that the reactor efficiency versus the cost, as the reactor efficiency is low, the associated cost of the separation will be higher while that of the reaction will be lower. The green line represents the reactor cost, the red line represents the separation cost. But as the reactor efficiency is increasing, the separation cost is decreasing because earlier the load was shifted here to the separation system but now because of improvement of the reactor efficiency the load of distillation column has been reduced but at the highest efficiency the obviously the operation cost of the reactor will be higher while that of distillation will be the lower so these are the two extreme ends but now we have to find out a optimal point so this is the optimal point where at this efficiency we get the minimum cost because at this point the cost is higher at this point the cost is higher so following the parabola you can see that at this point we get the optimal design so there is always a trade-off between the reaction system and the separation system we cannot afford too much efficiency and at the same and we cannot afford the too low efficiency so we have to make a trade-off based on the cost and at this point we can say that we have an economic design now talking about the pillars of CRE basically there are five pillars that has been defined by Fogler in his book number one is the more balance and we will start from this chapter then rate loss stoichiometry isothermal design and then the heat effects so overall if we talk about a complete design scheme for example of isothermal system that starts with the more balance rate law stoichiometry combine these and then evaluate and if we include the non-isothermal design then after psychometry we will add energy balance then we will combine and finally we will get the evaluation part and final results so we will discuss it in our upcoming lectures as well however you should not cut the edges of the building block because if you cut the edge cutting the edge means you have a weaker concept or you think that this concept is not important this concept is unnecessary do not consider any single concept as unnecessary because what will happen it will lead to the falling of the building obviously you do not want the building to fall so again all these blocks should be properly aligned and all the concepts should be properly grasped like more balance again we will we are starting this chapter today it should be completely grasped before moving to rate law for example if it's a second order system how the rate law will be written if it's a second order irreversible or reversible what will be the difference in the rate law equation if we are writing stoichiometry for the batch system or for the flow system what will be the difference so we have to understand all aspects before going to this these designs these are the isothermal non-isothermal designs now starting uh, chapter number one which is related to mole balance what are the objectives of this chapter number one is to describe and define the rate of reaction derive the general mole balance equation we will start in this point the number two point in the next lecture apply the general mole balance equation to the four most common types of industrial reactors the major classification is the batch reactor and the continuous reactor among which batch reactors from continuous we have continuous state and reactor CSTR plug flow reactor PFR and packed bed reactor PBR and then develop a preliminary form of design equation for these four reactors in the process but now starting the chapter which is chapter number one what is a chemical species a chemical species is said to have reacted when it has lost its chemical identity a chemical species means anything which has some mass and it's composed of some atoms or molecules like water is a chemical species methane is a chemical species but when these reacts for example methane reacts with water to produce co and hydrogen then this methane has lost its chemical identity which was having formula of CH4 because the properties like boiling point, freezing point or some other aspects density etc would be different but now once it has transformed to CO and H2 it has lost its chemical identity and now the new formed species will have some different properties. 
the identity of a chemical species is determined by kind number and configuration of that species atoms now there are three types by which a chemical species can lose its identity number one is the decomposition number two is the combination and number three is the isomerization so we will discuss these three points in our upcoming lectures and you have to remember these that there are three ways by which a chemical species can lose its identity now talking about rate of reaction there are different definitions which we have read in our literature one of these is that the reaction rate is the rate which represents the time at which a species loses its chemical identity per unit volume or we can say species loses its identity per unit volume per time if we do not add rate over here it can be expressed or the units can be expressed in mole per cubic decimeter per second or mole per volume per time and it can be expressed in terms of negative symbol and in terms of positive symbol now when to use negative when to use positive for the reactants we will always say minus r subscript a which represents that that is the rate of reaction of that species a but the minus sign shows that it is disappearing in the system it is reacting in the system for positive r of p that the product species whose rate of reaction but since it's positive it means it is generating in the system so these are the different conventions which we have to remember consider the isomerization reaction for example a goes to b we we'll write as r of a not minus r a simple r of it then we will say that it is the rate of formation of species a per unit volume or formation of species a per unit volume per time however minus r a means the rate of disappearance of species a per unit volume and r of b represents the rate of formation of species b per unit volume so these are the different conventions if we write plus r a for this it will denote rate of formation of a if we write minus r b for this it will represents the rate of disappearance of b but basic concepts which need to be kept in mind that for reactants the rate of disappearance is a positive number for products the rate of disappearance is a negative number because they are not disappearing they are forming they are producing in the system for reactants the rate of formation is a negative number we are talking about the values for example minus ra is equal to 5 mole per cubic decimeter per second but if you write it as r of a which represents the rate of formation that it will be minus 5 not plus 5 or simply you can say that you have multiplied both sides by the minus so rate of formation is negative number because they are disappearing and not being formed and for products the rate of formation is always a positive number for example a goes to b if a species b is formed at a rate of 0.2 moles per decimeter cube per second then we will write it as r of b is equal to 0.2 mole per cubic decimeter per second but if you say it as minus r of b which will represent the rate of disappearance of species b which is actually the product then it will be minus 0.2 and then a is disappearing at the same rate minus r is equal to 0.2 mole per cubic decimeter per second because the stoichiometric coefficient of both a and b is 1 so the rate at which the a will disappear the same will be the rate at which b will appear in the system however the rate of formation of generation of a is you can say multiplied both side by minus so that will be r of a is equal to minus 0.2 mole per cubic decimeter however for catalytic reactions these we are talking about the non catalytic reactions but for the catalytic reactions we usually write it as minus we usually write it as minus r a prime which refers to the rate of disappearance of species per mass of catalyst phases now the volume is replaced by the mass of catalyst mole per gram of catalyst per second so you have to remember that one is minus r a which is in terms of volume one is minus r a prime which is in terms of weight of catalyst mass of catalyst one the minus r a is for non catalytic system minus r a prime is for the catalytic system however dca over dt which is a change in concentration per time although it has the same unit as that of rate it is not the rate of reaction these are the different aspects consider species j r of j is the rate of formation of species j per unit volume it is a function of temperature pressure concentration 
and type of catalyst if catalyst is included and if catalyst is included then obviously we have seen in previous slide that will be a prime symbol it is independent of type of reaction system it is not affected by the reactor in which it will be take place like batch plug flow etc it's an algebraic equation it is not a differential equation differential equation has different representation for example minus r is equal to kca for example for the first order system it will be kca while for the second order system it will be minus r is equal to kca square and now finally for yourself i am writing the equation consider the reaction a plus 2b goes to 3c in which rate of disappearance of a is 5 mole of a per cubic decimeter per second at the start of the reaction and you have to answer the following what is minus ra what is rate of formation of b what is rate of formation of c rate of disappearance of c rate of formation of a and what is minus rb now you just pause it solve it and after 5 seconds just resume it and you will get your required answers over here so that's it from this video thank you so much in the next video in the next lecture we will move to the next part which is general mole balance we will discuss about the type of processes and we will derive the initial mole balance equation for these reactor till then it's goodbye stay tuned for more exciting videos